So the purpose of this project is to build an app that allows you to track the books that you're reading at any point of time, and it allows you to rate it. In a way, it's very similar to uh, the website called Goodreads, if you're familiar with that. Goodreads allows you to uh, browse books and uh, mark books as something that you're reading or something that you want to read. And then once you're finished reading, it allows you to rate it and it allows you to review it. Okay. Uh, there's also a social aspect of Goodreads where you have friends and then you can recommend books to your friends and all that stuff. So Goodreads does a lot. What I want to do in this app is basically allow people to browse books, right? Browse by the name of the book, the author, see all the books that an author has written, right? Browse all the data. Uh, and also it allows you to mark something as something that you want to read or something that you've read. Okay, and it allows you to rate the books. Uh, we're not going to be doing the social aspect of it, right? Friends and recommendations and all that stuff. We're not going to be doing that. It's more of like a solo experience. You can have a catalog of books that you've read and what you liked about the books, right? So you can have a rating system and all that stuff. And also allows you to browse through books. Um, I am going to be calling this app as Better Reads. A bit of a tongue in cheek here. Uh, as much as I'm not a fan of Goodreads, I think it does its job decently well. I don't think I can do a better job than what Goodreads does, at least in the scope of this project. But um, what I want to do is be able to, uh, to host the data of all the books in the world, so to speak, and then be able to uh, provide a user experience where people can browse through those books and also mark things as, uh, you know, they read it, they didn't read it, they didn't finish it. Uh, what they rated on a scale of one to five, and then we show people the books that they've read, okay? Uh, I'm going to be using a data source for this, which is uh, something called Open Library, okay? Open Library has, uh, basically it's a website, openlibrary.org, it's a part of the Internet Archive uh, project. This has, uh, data about all the books, okay? So the, the, the tagline, if you, if you mouse over Open Library, it says one page for every book, okay? So it's, it's an interesting concept. So let me open this in a new uh, tab. So for example, I can, you know, um, there's a lot more ways in which you can browse uh, over here. So let's say I pick this book, right? This is one book, which is uh, titled Brave New World, okay? And this has a certain URL, okay? So this is the URL, open library slash works slash some code slash brave new world. And it basically has created this page for um, one book, okay? So uh, setting aside all the different things that you can do and browse through this here, what I wanna do is be able to do something like this, all right? Imagine building an app where you're storing all the books in the world, right? Not the book contents, but metadata about the books, right? Metadata about all the books in the world and be able to provide a page for each book which describes what the book is, the title, who the author is, some cover art, and then description, okay? So we're gonna build this, okay? We're gonna take this data from Open Library and we're gonna create our own app which allows you to browse and also allows people to mark something as uh, things that they've read, okay? Uh, so this is a developer center. Uh, I'm gonna be extracting the data from here. Well, I'm gonna be downloading the data rather and uh, setting it up in my app. So there are two API sources that it provides, two data sources that this, that Open Library provides. First is the web API, which, is, uh, which allows you to make a call for a certain book and it gives you information about the book, okay? This is not what we want to do. We want to get all the data hosted ourselves and build a system which serves that data. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at data dumps. Okay, there is data dumps that Open Library provides, which is basically a bulk download of all the book information. Okay, so here is bulk download. Uh, Open Library data dumps has a bunch of data that you can basically just download and use however you want. Uh, there are different types of data here. Uh, there is edition stump, which is basically individual editions, and then the work dump, which is basically like, I write a book which has multiple editions, the work is this guy, and the editions is this guy, okay? Uh, and then you have the author's dump, which is basically information about all the authors, okay? So we're gonna get this, and we're gonna build a system which serves this information as a web application, 
Okay, and as you can realize, there's not a small amount of data. Uh, the work stamp that we're going to pick is around two gigabytes of data, which is compressed. So when you extract it, it's going to be much more. Uh, the author's dump is around half a gig. Okay, so we're going to get this information and host it. We're going to design a system which can serve up this data as one page per book with our own system design. And we learn how to do this in an efficient way possible. We don't want our system to get bogged down by this large amount of data. So how do we design a system which serves this efficiently, okay? This is what I'm gonna do. So what, we are, what we'll do is uh, start out with the user experience, okay? We are going to build a web application with a certain user experience. And I always start my system design with the user experience, right? You have to do that. Once you identify what it is that you want to provide to the user, what it is that the user is going to get from your app, we can later work backwards and design the system and design the architecture and all those things, okay? So we're going to start out with the system. We're going to start out with the user experience design. From there, we're going to go to system design. And from there, we're going to go deep, deep into the architecture. And then we're going to build this sucker, okay? We're going to build this app, which will serve this data kind of like a mirror of open library um, API, but instead it's gonna be a web app and it allows you to track your uh, your reading habits, okay? So don't download this data yet. Uh, this is gonna be a lot of data and uh, you don't necessarily wanna be doing this unless you, you're really motivated to get all the data. What I'm gonna do is after I am done recording this course, I'm gonna provide you with a data set that you can download and use instead. Right? You don't have to download like two gigs or three gigs. You're gonna download a smaller data set which contains a bunch of books and authors and you can use that and follow along so you're not basically uh, you know, getting all this data and waiting for hours for all of that to get set up, okay? Uh, I'm gonna be doing this so that we know that our system scales but you don't have to, okay? So with that said, let's move on to the user experience. What do we want the user experience to be? Let's take a look at the user experience. Identifying what the UX is is very important because A, it gives you a good idea about kind of like the, the overall flow of the app and B, it also gives you an idea of what the data needs are, right? What is the kind of data that you need and also how are you retrieving it? What are the common use cases where you're retrieving it? This is very important when you're dealing with, um, you know, big data applications like what we are tackling here. Uh, as opposed to relational applications. You know, you have relational databases. You don't think about the app first. You think about their data model, build the design, right? The database design, and then the application can kind of figure out how to get data from it, right? You basically have a completely normalized database, ideally normalized tables, and then you run SQL queries, do joins or whatever to get what data you need in the application after the fact, right? You don't think about the application when you're designing the system, uh, the database system, but, with applications like this, you need to do that, right? You need to identify what are the common usage patterns, what are the data query patterns that you commonly need, and you need to structure your database so that you're optimizing for these common usages, okay? So um, that's the reason why it's very important to do uh, user experience design first. So with that, let's actually identify what are the key pages or user experience elements that we need for our application. We're going to start out with the book page, right? Going with the theme of the one page per book idea, right? We're going to provide one page for every book in the world, okay? So that page is going to look something like this. We're going to have, uh, basically, this is the book page. This is going to have the book information, right? It's going to have cover, the cover image. It's going to have the title and then some description, then the author. Okay, so this is going to give you information about the book. For the sake of simplicity, I'm not going to do uh, too much off. Uh, you know, um, other information over here, just some basic elements about the book should be fine. Uh, what I'm also going to do is have the ability for a logged in user to mark this book as you know something they're reading or something they've already read okay so if their user is logged in i'm going to provide a form here which basically lets them mark their uh, reading experience of this book right they can see when they started reading the book 
when they finished reading the book what the rating is right on a scale of uh, one to five and then uh, the status are they still reading it rereading it uh, they didn't finish it or they're currently reading it you know stuff like that or they already read it whatever it is right so we're gonna have a bunch of these uh, information that a user can enter for any book in the world okay so they open the book page so it's going to give you the image of the book it's going to give you a description of the book and then the user is logged in they can mark any book as something that they have interacted with right they either finished reading or they didn't read or whatever uh, and they can post this information all right so what we need in this page is the ability to load information about a book as quickly as we can okay we want this page to be performant we don't want to stick all that data all that information of like thousands and thousands of books into a relational database table and have it do table scans to get a certain uh, book given an id right we don't want to do that we want this to be very efficient so that's what our goal is for this page right we're going to build this page and we can allow people to interact with it and mark something as uh, a book they've read or they're currently reading okay so this is the first page this page is going to have author information which is this guy the name of the author we want to be able to have users navigate to other books that the author has written okay so they go here they go to the book page they look at the author they should be able to click on the author name and get the author page which has all the books that the author has written okay so how does that page look like I'm going to call this the author page. This is going to have uh, maybe an image of the author if it's available. And then it's going to have the books that this author has written. Okay. And we want these books to appear in reverse chronological order okay we want the latest book that the author has written to show up first and the book before it to show up after and so on right we want to be able to load this page and see all the books that a certain author has written so in a way what we're doing is also we're creating a page for every author okay it's not a physical page of course it's a virtual page we're going to build this on request but the idea is we're going to be creating a page where every author is uh, is shown and then all the books that that author has written is going to show up over here as a list okay so we have created two pages here one is the book page a page for every book and then author page which is a page for every author which contains all the books that that author has written okay so these are the two pages what else i want to have a search page where people can search for books it's not likely that a user would know what the idea of a book is they would search by a title okay so we should be able to search by title so i'm gonna have kind of like this text box and then search input and then once they search for a book they should be able to get all books that match that particular search criteria okay so this is a search page next since this is a this requires user session because a user is marking a book as read or not read or whatever so you need to know who the user is right so what we're going to do is we're going to build uh, some login uh, system right we're going to have a login page uh, i'm probably not going to build a user id password thing i'm probably going to use like a, an oauth login like github or facebook uh, but we want people to log in, right? Because we want to know who the user is. So when they mark a book as I'm reading it, we need to associate it with that user. Okay, so we're going to build login infrastructure. Okay, so there's going to be a home page, which is which is going to have a login, or it's going to have search.
okay? So it's gonna be either you log in or you can do a free form search, right? We, want, we don't wanna restrict the usage of the application to just people who have logged in, but uh, if somebody wants to mark a book as, uh, you know, I'm reading or whatever, then they have to log in, obviously, okay? So this is the homepage for a uh, no login experience, okay? And now what is a homepage for when somebody has already logged in, okay? For that, I'm going to create a page called my books, okay? So this is homepage for logged in. This is gonna be called So this is gonna contain the last few books that I have read, okay? So I can make this maybe, um, this is, this is for the logged in case. This is going to be maybe the last, I don't know, uh, 50 books that the user has read. Uh, this is gonna be in reverse chronological order And it is going to be uh, currently reading should be first. Okay, if the user is reading something right now, that should show up at the top of the list. And uh, if the user is not reading anything or if the user is reading multiple, then it's gonna be reverse chronological order. If there's a mix of something that user is reading and something the user already read, again, that has to be reverse chronological order. So it's basically two sort criteria. One is uh, reading and you know not reading. And then among those, you have a uh, reverse chronological order, all right? So this is uh, basically the overall uh, user experience that I'm targeting. Now let's think about what the system design should be. We wanna do this, but the for user information, it's okay. We don't have, we're not gonna be having like millions and millions of users. We should, we should probably design a system which accommodates millions of users, but we know that we have a lot of books, okay? Lots of book information, all right? So how are we gonna handle uh, these pages, all right? The author page, and uh, the book page, how do we handle it efficiently? What is the system architecture? What is the system design to make sure that the whole system works efficiently with this huge amount of data? So let's take a look at that in the next video.